On the 16th of March, the Spanish Prime Minister announced a lockdown for two weeks to shut down everything. This includes schools, various jobs, and it even restricts to only being allowed outside to walk your dog. At the rate of the cases of the coronavirus in Spain, it is highly likely that this might go on for a couple of months. And maybe many of us are now finding it challenging to carry this new way of life. The day it was announced, I flew back in from Amsterdam. And since I live with old Spanish people, we had agreed to keep me quarantined in my room for two weeks. And within those 14 days, my whole life existed within the walls of my bedroom. For those of you that don't know, I'm originally from Melbourne, Australia, and I have a one-year contract with the Spanish government to teach here in Spain. In these two weeks, my whole life existed in this room. And I would like to share that feeling happy and complete is 100% accomplishable without contact outside a given space. So I'm going to take you guys step by step on some of the things that I do every day. And if it resonates with you, I invite you to include some of these in your daily activities. Firstly, I start my mornings holding back the urge to check my phone. I find this really helps to put myself in a clear state of mind. I also always keep a glass of water on the side of my bed and have one to two cups in the morning. Then I begin meditating. Headspace is a great meditation app. However, for those that don't want to pay $70 a year, I highly recommend Smiling Mind. It is completely free and has a wide range of guided meditations to get you started. We all know the importance of exercise, but just like our muscles, our brain has to be constantly trained too. Meditation is such an important and beneficial tool that should be taught in schools from a young age. After two and a half years of on and off trying to implement a daily meditation routine, I have come to a point in my life where I meditate every day and I feel the effects of it when I don't. Meditation has taught me that I am not my thoughts, but an observer of them. I watch my thoughts as an, as an outsider and it has helped me control my obsession with food as well as witnessing my emotions instead of reacting on them. After meditating, I ask myself this question. What is the greatest ideal of myself I can be today? I visualize myself completing all the tasks that need to be done in my idealized version of myself. Many studies show that our brain does not know the difference between an imaginary scene and our reality. When we visualize, we put ourselves in a state of mind which tricks our brain to believe an event has already occurred. This is a great way to map out your day and become the person you have always idolized to be. Something I have recently incorporated in my daily morning routine is to listen to positive affirmations. We don't realize but our head has been filled up all these years through advertisements and television shows, subliminally telling us how to think or behave in a certain way that maybe we aren't beautiful or that we lack materialistic items. A 21 day reset can help us overcome that. I try to listen to affirmations while I get ready in the mornings. I find that also writing it down helps to further reinforce it, bringing us one step closer to the ideal versions of ourselves. And then next I follow off with some exercise. I find that it really helps to get blood flow to the brain and I find I am much more productive if I've completed some exercise before getting anything else done. This usually takes in the form of HIIT workouts and then I follow it up with ab exercises, anything that comes to do with legs or arms. Recently, I've been incorporating more yoga into my life. I find that it also helps to connect more with myself spiritually. If I could, I would also go for a walk or run, but since it isn't allowed, I encourage you to do so and spend some time in nature. This is subject to the country you live in though, as in Spain, we aren't allowed to leave the house without good reason. Get some sun, as it will strengthen your immune system. This is now a good time to complete any work that needs to be done. Everyone lives on different schedules, so this part can be tweaked to suit your personal lifestyle. A tip that has helped me increase productivity is to create mini goals. 
For example, if I set myself a goal to read one page a day, I find that it is much more accomplishable and I end up reading more. This can also apply to university assignments. If you are prone to leaving big chunks of work on the due date, this can be really helpful to help you complete it on time. Set yourself a goal to write 10 words on your assignment a day. And once you start, you might find that you end up finishing your essay. I now invite you to write down a list of things that you've always wanted to do but told yourself you didn't have enough time for. This can include things like reading, dancing, making music, learning a skill, learning a language, and finding a personal project. For me, it was always to make a YouTube video. Some other examples of activities that I have set for myself include completing courses on Coursera. This is a great website full of free university courses that range from courses like learning Chinese to courses on nutrition. I have always wanted to focus more on learning Spanish, German and French. So lately I have been using language transfer on YouTube or SoundCloud. Language transfer approaches language learning in a manner that just within five minutes you'll be able to say a sentence in a foreign language you had never learned before. It's made for beginners and it's fantastic for building speech fluency. However, I wouldn't recommend it for pronunciation and listening. To practice that, I watch TV shows on Netflix in their corresponding subtitles and with a notebook nearby, I write down any vocabulary that I have picked up on. For those of you that have never heard of Skillshare, Skillshare is a great website to learn new skills through video courses by professionals or experienced individuals within their given field. They offer courses on a wide range of topics from how to perfect a macaroon to how to build a website. I will leave a link in the description box. Since we are in quarantine, I am challenging myself to learn a new skill every day. I love to cook, and while it was hard in those two weeks to not be able to set foot in the kitchen, I spent a bit of time watching cooking videos and learning how to create new flavours. Since the beginning of the lockdown, I have been completely plant-based, and I feel the best uh, that I have ever felt. Do keep in mind though that not all my days look like this, I am still human and I have had days where I spent all day on YouTube or Netflix while inhaling popcorn and snacks. The most important part though is to keep consistent and get back on track the next day. So when it comes to bedtime, I end my days with gratitude. I list five things that I really feel grateful for in my life. This can be as little as the air I breathe or having warm clothes. And this way, it makes me realise that everything I ever need is already within my reach. I either write it down or I say it quietly to myself. I choose to take it slow an hour or two before bed and make sure I get myself plenty of rest. I also tend to write to-do lists for the next day and spend some time visualising or meditating until I drift off. While this is a confusing time for us right now, and some of us are still adjusting to a new routine, this is the perfect time for self-care and self-reflection. Find love within your body and mind. Be kind and help others that may be feeling anxious or uncertain due to the effects of media and the fear that has been spreading around. When I first arrived in Spain, I definitely was in a bit of pain, but in a very isolated kind of pain. I learned, however, to turn that into happiness. I think our perception of happiness and our perception of our reality all comes from here, our mentality. And at the start, I was isolated in a small town without my friends, without my family, without a language to even express my thoughts or my feelings. And at the start, it was very difficult, but I've learned to make the most out of it. And now I wake up every day feeling completely grateful and very happy despite the circumstances. And I believe that you can too. It just starts with how you start your day. Uh -huh.